coming to you live from the Hills Youth and Family Services. Today, um, I want to talk with Taylor Jacobson, who is one who works here, and have her tell a little bit about what she does. But first of all, just to give you a little bit of background, we're here on our Woodland Hills campus, um, situated in Woodland. The Hills Youth and Family Services has three programs, Woodland Hills Juvenile Justice Program, Cambia Hills Mental Health Program, and Neighborhood Youth Services. Uh, we have 140 acres, and as you can see, it's a beautiful fall day in Duluth. So Taylor, Tell us a little bit about you, your background, how you got started here, what your current role is. Yeah, um, so I don't have a very cookie cutter route of getting here. Uh, I actually have a degree in chemistry from University of Minnesota Duluth. Um, I, eventually, I initially had wanted to create uh, psychopharmaceutical medications to help people in similar positions to our clients actually and I wanted to attack it from the research route and I thought that's really the way I wanted to go. I did some research like that at Mayo Clinic uh, as an undergrad, luckily enough, and there's a lot of sitting behind the computer and even the research that I read said, you know what, these people, they do a lot better when they have people in their lives. Um, you know, a drug in and of itself is, is not um, a solution. And so that just really got my gears turning about what what side of the solution that I want to be on. Um, and I was just growing as an individual too. And I really, that junior year of college for me, I was like, you know, I think I want to be on the ground floor. I don't think I want to sit at this computer. And more power to those people, we need them. Um, it just, I couldn't do it. And so when I graduated from college, I switched to a human services route. Um, and I, I had seen like Woodland Hills job applications out there and I always felt like underexperienced, I think, to apply. So I kind of avoided it for a bit. So I worked as a mayor corps service member. Um, I worked then as a, um, a receptionist at a treatment program. And then um, finally I quit that receptionist job because it was, again, just a lot of sitting. And I just am not made to sit and sit on a computer all day. I can't do it. Um, I quit that job and uh, about a month later I applied at the Hills um, knowing that for me the only thing that's really stuck is kids. I've volunteered with kids since I stopped being a kid, which maybe clients and staff might argue that I'm still a kid in some regards. Um, but no, I as soon as I was in junior high I was helping out with kids in elementary school. As soon as I was in high school I was mentoring some junior hires. and. I actually worked at one of uh, the branches of the Hills Neighborhood Youth Services. I worked there for a year under a work-study program through UMD um, my freshman year of college. And so I just have never stopped seeking those opportunities to be uh, an older mentor in kids' lives. And so when I didn't really know what else to do, I was like, well, this is really the only thing I can see myself doing and not hating after two years. And so. Um, it stuck and I applied and I uh, was offered the interview and here I am two years later about. Um, I currently work with the Laker group which is one of our mental health groups. Uh, I'm the senior MHP in that group and so uh, I, that just really means that I spend some of my time planning structure for the kids, um, some of my plan time training staff that are newer, um, and of course, a lot of my time still on the ground floor working with kids. So. Which is probably you enjoy that ground floor work with the kids. I do. It's very active, um, which is which is helpful for me personally, for my own personal likings for a job. I, but I just, um, it, I really believe that kids need adults in their lives. And I also have experienced that a lot of kids don't have positive adults in their lives, either because the adults didn't know how to be a positive adult or weren't capable or whatever it was. Um, but so I, I kind of, I just really enjoy that opportunity to, to be with the kids every day. I mean, we, everything the kids do, we do with them. Um, they do barn chores. We help them with barn chores. We're not, we're not just sitting back <laughs> watching them. I mean, like I've got a broom in hand. I did barn chores this morning. I've probably got animal poop on my shoes. Like it's just <laughs> part of the job, you know, it's part of the job. Um, uh, which I which I love and, and it's great for the kids too because then they have they
I see these different interactions with adults, like, whoa, this, this adult is doing this with me? This is strange. You know? Well, are there adults playing with us? Like, right. I think one of my first memories of meeting you was actually at the cross-country ski <laughs> it was, yes. with the Lakers. Oh, man. Um, which was hilarious. Mm -hmm. I think I have some great pictures of you falling, maybe. That's possible. <laughs> um, but I think for the girls, for them to see us having fun yeah. and struggling with an activity just like them or along with them right. helps eases that because I know that a lot of times they just haven't had those adults play with them. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we talked about in our last conversation was you're an MHP yeah. and you got that credentialing while you were working here. I did. Yep. Um, it's, it's simple in essence uh, how you get it. Really I just put 2,000 hours in working here with the mental health population and since I've worked with the mental health population for 2,000 hours, the state of Minnesota determines that I have the credentialing to be a mental health professional, which, I mean, it's, it's just a, you know, it's just a title to say that this person has experience working with clientele with mental health. So it kind of prepares you as you're looking for your long-term career. Mm -hmm. You're getting some trainings that's now recognized by the state of Minnesota right. that can open doors should you decide to go someplace else or to um, even open up more doors here within the hills. Right, that's a title that makes sense outside of just the hills. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I take that with me in the entire state and that'll make sense um, as to, you know, what, what you're doing. And, and honestly, from what I've been told by people who have worked in other places as well just having worked in a residential facility really prepares you for a lot of other types of work um, it's you, you have to learn fast on your feet because it it's action-packed you're dealing with these kids day in day out and all of them have you know very unique struggles and you have to face unique challenges every day and grow unique skills to meet those challenges it's really um, you know, just reflecting on who I was two years ago and who I am now, I've, I've grown significantly since I've been here as well. And I think that's one of the main ways that I've grown is I have more confidence in pursuing a long-term career. Mm -hmm. So thinking back to two years ago when you first started, mm -hmm. um, what were you more, most nervous about or maybe unsure about your position? Yeah, um, so I had never worked in a position that needed this level of care for kids. I had never been in any physical restraints, never had any training, had no idea what that would look like. I'm physically small. I was like, I don't, I don't know, you know? Uh, and it's a little nerve wracking approaching that as the first time and it. And it is something to learn and mm -hmm. you have to gain skills and you know, to do it safely and appropriately and knowing when to do it and everything like that. But you get, you get the training you need, um, the initial training and then you have staff supporting you the whole way. and. Uh, it wasn't long before I had confidence in that too. So that was one of my main worries starting. Um, other than that is just you, when you're a new staff, it's, you have to be in charge of these kids, but they don't know you. Mm -hmm. They don't have necessarily a reason to listen to you. And so there is just this period of time where uh, you're kind of earning your keep. I guess mm -hmm. with the kids and that takes a lot of work and and just some resilience to be to be willing to have a kid swear at you and walk away because you know they don't they don't care what you have to say right. yet maybe right. you know well you can't just walk in and expect a kid to trust you and right. respect you no. when they don't know anything about you and there's no relationship there right. so it takes that time to build that relationship especially with youth who are coming to our program who have so many other issues going on just to have one more adult that right. they suddenly have to trust is sometimes difficult. Yep. So what's been the most surprising thing about working here? Ah, uh, the most surprising question. I think that every time I, every time I get in a groove, I get stumped mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's, maybe not super surprising, but at the same time, I, I, whether it be just the new kid comes in, then I'm like, man, I really, no, I don't, I don't have this down. Or uh, I go to a training and um, I'm humbled by like what I don't know yet and how much there really is to, to learn and practice and keep moving forward. Um, so it's surprising really how, how much time it takes 
to learn everything and how many there's so many nuances to this job mm -hmm. I'm still learning and I'm still you know I, even staff who've been there for like four months there's like a whole new if you work a different night <laughs> say you work a Tuesday night and you haven't worked Tuesday night before all of a sudden you're like well I, I've never done phone calls before and there's right. a brand new thing that you have to learn and have, so there's just always something new to learn so that was surprising but I think another thing that surprised me maybe more on the positive side is that the community within the hills and the staff that I work with is is really phenomenal. Um, I feel that you bond as co-workers rather quickly mm -hmm. and part of that is because a lot of people come here with the goal to be a helper and uh, that that's part of it and then another part of it is just you're you're in these intense situations or just in or not just like very intimate situations mm -hmm. like you're living life with the kids so you end up living life with your coworkers. right you know you're doing very normal things you're going to school you're doing like hygiene routines you're making sure everyone's brushing their teeth and you're watching movies and you're you know uh, you're teaching social skills you're doing all these kind of normal life things alongside of your staff and you become close-knit and it's it's a great place to work um, in the sense that the staff are supportive of one another well and you really have to have that relationship with each other right because there yeah. could be situations where you need to know that everybody's doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing in a crisis situation and so to have that relationship where you're trusting each other yes and knowing that everybody is there really really helps right and so you you gotta make those efforts not only to get to know some of the people on your team but at least introduce yourself kind of start to get to know people on other teams too because you are responding to other crisis situations with other groups and to be able to to trust other staff and bring them into a moment with the kid and direct them and communicate on the fly it's uh, I don't know it's bonding but also it's worth bonding because we, we do our job better when we're working as a team absolutely uh, so thinking about some of your favorite memories, maybe some clients that stick out in your mind that you'll like always kind of walk away with, oh, that, that person really made an impact on who I am, or I'll always think of something, like what I think of our cross country skiing experience, sure. and I just remember some of the girls in the pajama pants that they must have been wearing like their onesie pajamas. So like that really <laughs> impacted yeah, that's me. That's true. <laughs> I think they were wearing onesie pajamas that day. Um, you know, they had to stay warm. I know. That's one it's, of the warmest pajamas are great. That they own. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, let's see. One of my favorite experiences with the kids, um, we talk a lot about selling an activity and not just telling them this is what we're going to do. And so, um, one of the things that I worked really hard to sell, I was like, guys, guess what? We get to go plant trees. <laughs> like, oh, we might get to plant trees. And I was just kind of like dropping this little trail for them for a couple weeks until it was finally time for us to go and when we got there we were trudging through a foot of, and not an exaggeration a foot of mud like a girl <laughs> lost her boot like we were covered um we it was just like it was so sloppy and messy and keep in mind these like our, my clients that i work with 12 to 17 year old girls you know not necessarily ones who would want to be trudging through the mud some of them yes and right. absolutely loved it others mm -mm, like that was could have the been their first first experience in some of that right it's the last nature thing they maybe wanted to do um but we had a great time it was great like i just got to see the clients pair off and work as a team to plant we planted like 200 trees that day maybe more i don't even remember what the number was but wow. the, my friend who had um accepted us as volunteers she's like yeah you guys planted way more than the college students that just came here and i was that's like awesome. that's right we did and my lakers awesome. did that but we i we just driving home on the bus um you know we were blasting the music and not too loud because we can't <laughs> blow the speakers out of course but we were just we were just enjoying ourselves we had just worked really hard and so everyone like was in a great mood and um, we had bag lunches and so like and they're just so excited that they had two uncrustables and like It was just uh, it was a really good moment to, to do something, you know, give them an opportunity to volunteer Which they maybe hadn't experienced before right. Which also isn't something we get a ton of opportunities to do but just to have an activity that It, it was my first time planting trees mm -hmm. so, And it was great like it was just really fun. That was one of my favorite experiences with the kids and I reflect on it a lot 
I love watching the kids be kids. Yeah. Like, I think that sometimes we get so wrapped up in the the work that we do here that sometimes we forget they're kids yeah. and they need to just have fun yeah, and yeah. do stuff that 12 year olds do and mm -hmm. go out and play and so it's so much fun when I'm doing something watching that just pure joy of whatever moment they're in mm -hmm. where they've forgotten about everything else of, that's been going on so yeah. that's really fun that you can yeah. and have those opportunities with them mm -hmm. um, and then there's some days that aren't really good ones, right? Some days that are really can be mentally tough. So what do you do at the end of a shift to unwind, um, to kind of, you know, step into that role outside of your life outside of here? Yeah, it depends on the shift. Um, sometimes I get off in the afternoon. Sometimes I get off late at night. Um, so it really depends. Sometimes you have to come back to work at 6 a.m. the next morning and you left at 1. And that's just the reality. I mean, we talked before about how helping is inconvenient actually helping right. is inconvenient um, and I think one of the main things that keeps me going is just the fact that I've accepted that there's going to be job, aspects of this job that are inconvenient nobody wants to leave their shift an hour later than I think it's that's not I don't want that right but I do want the kids to be safe and mm -hmm. I do want to follow through a kid in a moment of distress and crisis to the end of that crisis if if I can um, and so some of it is just having an overall mindset and understanding that this is a job that you know you're coming to make a difference and part of making a difference is is willing to be willing to be inconvenienced um, for the sake of somebody else and so that's really big for me but as far as de-stressing after work I mean there's a night where I, I think I left at midnight and I still went home and walked my dog because it just was so much. Mm -hmm. um, and I just experienced so much noise on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, there's kids that are having fun or just a million Miss Jacobsons, can I, can I, can I, can I, would you please do this? Maybe without the please. But uh, it's just, it's like overload. Even if you have a great day, it's like an overload sometimes. And so um, just seeking quiet. A lot of staff talk about their drive home being kind of like this sacred time where mm -hmm. you just kind of let everything settle um, and uh, staying engaged in what I like to do outside of here. I don't bring my work home with me. <laughs> um, I try not to think too much about work when I'm not here. I don't do any planning outside of work if I can avoid it. Um, you know, when I'm at home, I want to do things like out with my dog and go right. rock climbing and you know I just try to be active and take care of myself really well outside of work um, and then spending time with friends and everything like that and if you lose sight of that um, then it's gonna be really hard to come to work every day so yeah on a particularly hard day I'd say most of the time <laughs> most of the time just because this is how things work you're gonna end up staying late and you probably have to be here at six in the morning the next day because that's just usually when things happen. Um, and so sometimes you don't get to care for yourself right away. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just have to go to bed and mm -hmm. come back the next day, but um, facing each day uh, as like an individual day and yeah. not as a buildup of the last four days that were really hard is also really important too. So it's a lot of I mean, it's a lot of the skills we're teaching our kids. Right. <laughs> we got to utilize those too, um, because it's just it is really taxing and it yeah. is a hard job, but it's it's worth it. So we talked about you know, um, being. I love how you say helping others can be um, can be. What was the word you inconvenient. used? Inconvenient. Inconvenient. Um, and truly helping others can be inconvenient. Yeah. So talking about that, um, why should someone? Who and why should apply to become a youth care counselor here or any position really at the Hills, but especially those, you know, those direct care staff, yep. who and why should they do that? Yeah, um, definitely I, I'd say don't come to the Hills for a job if you're just looking for a cash flow. <laughs> don't come for that. You will be frustrated very quickly and you will want to leave because it's, it's just it's not that kind of job. It's not a nine to five. It's not a clock in, clock out kind of job. Um, 
so that would be a that would be a don't. But if you're passionate about kids, obviously we work with kids. If you're passionate about, um, you know, having the opportunity to make a change in even just an individual's life, that's that's a big deal. Um, you got to have a drive, you know. Most most staff who come here have had personal experiences that have led them to want to work here, mm -hmm. um, and that's that's a great thing. It's a really great thing that a lot of staff who work here have a past that motivates them to want to help others. Um, I'd say just be ready to come to work and put your stuff aside, and or at least be willing to learn how to do that. Right. Um, because it's just it, it takes it takes all of you. You can't you can't split your your mind and your thinking while you're at work. You have to be here and ready for the kids. And so, um, you know, if you want to have fun, this is a great place to work. I have a ton of fun. I get to, to jump in puddles. I get to you know hang out with our sheep and llamas and right. everything. I get to play volleyball and fall on my face. I get to. You know, I get to joke around in school and, and help kids just learn how to read, learn how to do basic math, you know. Mm -hmm. um, there's, if you like a job with a lot of variety, this is a great job for that. If you don't like sitting at a desk, right. perfect. We don't want you to sit at your right. desk. Please don't just sit at your desk while you're here. <laughs> we need you to be on your feet. So, um, you know, if you like to be active, if you are looking to make a difference with kids, if you just are... Yeah, if you just like to work with kids on any level, I think this is just a great experience. Absolutely. So. so if you're interested in learning more about our job opportunities here at The Hills, I encourage you to check out our website at thehillsyfs.org backslash careers. Thank you, Taylor, you're and welcome. to our lovely cameraman mm -hmm. over there. Um, we appreciate you coming on the fly, and we'll tune in next time.